Hi, Clutter Fairy fans. This is the Clutter Fairy Weekly for August 31st, 2021. I'm your co-host, Ed Gumnick, and I'm speaking with Gail Goddard, certified professional organizer and owner of the Clutter Fairy in Houston, Texas. Hi, everybody. The Clutter Fairy Weekly is a webcast and podcast where we dig deep into the clutter that stands between people and the lives that they want to be living. We aim to make sense of where so much stuff comes from in the first place, and we offer strategies to slow down the accumulation, reduce the collection, and comfortably manage the stuff we choose to keep. We rely heavily on the questions and topic suggestions we get from you, our viewers and listeners. If you're joining us in Zoom for the first time, you can share your comments and questions via the chat, and I'll try to make sure Gail gets to them before we move on to another topic. You can also use the raise hand feature to let me know that you'd like to ask a question or make a comment yourself via audio or video. We are also streaming the webcast live on Facebook, so you can share your questions and comments there, and I'll relay them to Gail. And during the webcast every Tuesday, you can speak to us by phone by calling 669-900-6833, use meeting ID 993-419-863, and password clutter to join the meeting. Let's start, as we usually do, by following up on last week's weekly tittle, which was called A Room of One's Own. The assignment was to evaluate a a family member-specific space in your home. We're talking about kids' rooms, she sheds, man caves, and so forth, with an eye toward how the room is serving its primary user or users. We want to hear from our participants in Zoom and Facebook. Who took on the tittle this week, and how did it go for you? Please let us know in the comments. Deborah said, I, I am on a rampage at a friend's house and we've been plowing through paper. Going again tomorrow, same thing. So much fun for me, not so much for others. Did anybody in, in our, who's with us live tackle this tittle this week? I think uh, we'll, re, we'll return to that as people have a chance to respond. Joyce okay. said, uh, Joyce offered an FYI for Netflix subscribers, which is that Marie Kondo's new series, Sparking Joy, has just been oh has it dropped dropped yeah has just been made available okay time to watch marie kondo so let me just uh you know word of warning um when she takes one of the things that she does is that she empties the entire closet out onto the bed so let me just tell you if you follow that process you're going to be working on clothes for the whole day (laughs) so just be prepared for that if you decide to take on that challenge she absolutely says pull it all out empty it 100 percent you're going to touch everything. And so it is a uh, labor intensive process. Just saying. <laughs> this is probably, probably a good time to reiterate that we are planning a, a Marie Kondo episode in the near future. We haven't forgotten that we teased everybody with that. And we have a list of email addresses of people who are interested in Giving talking feedback. to us about their, their experience. And we're going to, we'll have an announcement about that in the next week or two. Um, Diane said, I am reorganizing my office slash genealogy room as we speak. Keep me motivated. (laughs) Okay, go team go. (laughs) You can do it. That's a lot of paper when you're in the office of the genealogy, like you're keeping a bunch of records. And so um, creating a system that you find comfortable is important. Good luck with that. We'll wait to see how you see how you do and what questions you ask about it. And Eclair reports uh, that she worked on the on the tittle. She said, "I did. It worked out great. I have a she room, and it is about ninety five percent done. Awesome. I have, I have set up. Can a she room? Can a she shed be inside the house? I think it can. I think it can. <laughs> I have a she room, and it is about ninety five percent done. I have set up my sewing." administrative area, computer area, makeup and clothing prep area, clean the bookshelves, purged old files and pass job accoutrement, etc. Almost done. Need to make another pass at the makeup drawers and purge some more. That sounds like you made a huge amount of progress though. Good for you. Excellent job. I love it when people make some headway on the projects. That's so awesome. <clears throat> and Lise said, I actually have been working on this for a while. 
since our meeting, Gail, I, you work with her virtually. Virtually. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Removing my art and craft things from the spouse's woodworking shop slash garage. Splitting the, the garage just did not work out. Mm, okay. Frown, frowny face. <laughs> oh, frowny face. Yeah, well, you know, it's not the first time. Sometimes you try something and it's just not going to work out. You have to adapt. That's okay. If you're uh, making some shifts for it, then go for it. It'll be okay. And JC said, I have known for a long time, long time, <laughs> long while that most of the rooms don't serve their purpose fully because purposes have become mixed, melded, mm -hmm. maybe. She said melded, question mark, maybe mm -hmm. muddled. Muddled is That's good, right? Suggestion. I had some conversations this week to explore eventual opportunities to refine the purposes and move other things to other places. Return was mitigated. I'll keep trying. For now, I'll just work <laughs> undercover. Well, and, you know, work on the portions of the room and the purposes of the room that you're directly impacted by or directly in charge of. <clears throat> Even if you can just get a portion, like Lorraine was talking about, she made a pathway that was wider and she got some things out of the way and she cleared out the makeup in one area of her bedroom. Even making um, one area of the room work better will help you function better. And sometimes that change and improvement inspires others to get on board. So you can sort of set the example by working on the part that is um, directly controlled or affected by you. And Marilyn said, <clears throat> my she shed is halfway in and half, half out on the enclosed sun porch. Oh. Hung twinkle lights around the windows as I am an early riser and it's still dark. My plants are here on my desk and I'm listening to you right now in this room. Oh, that's awesome. That sounds lovely. It's nice that you added some light so that it works better. And I hope that you have good access and functionality in there. Um, you might keep thinking about evaluating how it works and can you do everything in there that you want to do and can you get around easily so good for you thank you thanks everybody for sharing jc uh eclair sh shared jc that is my particular problem too small house very small house and a multitude of interests every room has to do 10 jobs <laughs> right uh, vertical storage is your friend and if you have that many interests, I would try to evaluate them for uh, how much of an, how far up the scale of interest they are. You might look to uh, let go of some that are less exciting to you in order to make space for the ones that are more exciting to you. Just a thought. Joyce also reported it's, it's a little off topic for the, for the tittle, but she said my closest activity to doing the tittle was to uh, I was actually able to speak to a live person at the IRS. So I kept the poor woman on the phone for at least half an hour, at least an hour. <laughs> Sorry, It was the first time in nearly a year I was able to speak to a human being. Ooh, that's frustrating. Oh, good for you though. I'm glad you finally got a hold of somebody. I hope you got all your questions answered and you're in, you, you can scratch that item off your to-do list. Good for you. Okay, I think we'd better get to our featured topic. Yes, please. Aging forces us to shift our thinking about many aspects of our lives, including our, mo our mobility, safety, comfort, and independence. For today's featured topic, we're going to dig into the pros and cons of aging in place from an organizing perspective, and Gail will offer some strategies for preparing your home for the future, presumably older you. <laughs> this I mean, if you can't as... avoid the whole aging thing entirely. Right. <laughs> this came up as a topic for us because I have so many clients sitting with this decision, whether they're consciously sitting with it or not. We all think about what it'll be like as we age. Will we have the support we need? Will we be able to handle taking care of ourselves? Managing clutter in our spaces becomes a bigger part of the equation the older we get mostly because it becomes harder to deal with it and live in it and around it without negative impacts. So I wanna start the discussion today with this question, should you or shouldn't you age in place? We all wanna keep living like we're not aging at all, but that's just 
the illusion, right? Generally, you can age in place if you have the resources to fund various levels of support and your physical and mental capacities remain strong. The more that you lose mobility and the more that your mind slips, the harder it is to live alone or with an aging partner. Managing the contents of your home requires good mobility and mental capacity so that clutter definitely impacts how well you enjoy aging in place. What are the other options if you find that aging in place isn't going to work for you? You can downsize to a smaller place. You can move in with family. You can move into independent or assisted living or nursing care. But for all of these options, your home contents will have to be addressed in order to take advantage of these ways to provide you with more support to age gracefully. So how will you know it's time to change? What signs should be looking for? What are you struggling with right now in the house? Ed has been thinking about his sister Beth and Rich's stairs to the top floor as an example. Those stairs are narrow. <laughs> they're tight. They're narrow this way. They're tightly vertical and they're lethal to go up and down. They really are. <laughs> They're lethal. It's going to be a serious problem in the future for them, especially since there's no way to add a chairlift in that narrow stairway. They couldn't add a chair and like ride up and down. There's not enough room. It's too, it's too narrow this way as well. They'll have to move their bedroom to the first floor and update the bathroom there in order to deal with those stairs. Are there things that, you're, are, that you already find challenging about your living situation? Can you mitigate them or will they just keep getting worse? For example, do you have a big yard with lots of maintenance? Now, some people are big gardeners, but at some point there's gardening <laughs> and there's maintaining the yard around a big house. And if you are somebody who currently spends half or all of your weekend maintaining your yard, that's not going to be a good long-term strategy. And so adjusting now to mitigate that process, mitigate that workload is important. Do you have too much space to keep clean? Is it a big house that's on more than one floor, have multiple rooms? Is it a whole lot of cleaning going on? And if you can't afford or prefer not to have um, someone come and clean for you, that vast amount of real estate that you're having to clean gets harder and harder. Maybe you have a lot of outside steps and inside staircases. Um, there's been so much flooding in Houston lately, a lot of people are raising their houses off the ground 10 feet. And that means that where there wasn't stairs at the front of the house to get in, now there are. Well, that's going to be a problem <laughs> when you get older and you have to go up 10 feet of stairs and then maybe you have stairs also in the house. If there's a whole lot of steps and staircases in the house, um, that may be a barrier to staying someplace as you age. Is it difficult to access the attic or the basement or the storage areas? I just had a client tell me that she's too short. She's like 5'3". And how she functions in all kinds of areas in the house is that she gets up on a step stool, except that now she doesn't really feel safe getting on a step stool. And she used to store a lot of stuff in the attic, except now she really doesn't feel safe going up and down the attic stairs. Like that's, no, she can't do that anymore. So she's effectively cut off from everything that she has so carefully stored in the attic without somebody coming to get it down for her. And she certainly can't then turn around and put it back. The idea of finding it difficult to navigate the stairs with something in your hand, that just makes it exponentially worse. So if you are storing in places that are difficult to access, then as you lose mobility, you will also lose the ability to get to the stuff that you're keeping <laughs> in these weird places. Joyce had a, another good suggestion for, for this particular list, and that's neighbor availability. Am I able to call a neighbor in a pinch? Right, and let them come and do it, but you can't have a neighbor coming over every day, retrieving something, picking something, putting something away for you. They can't be part of your daily uh, maintenance of the house, but they can be your sort of a strategic retriever, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. If you need somebody to come and retrieve something, they can occasionally come and do that. But yeah, and they'd have to be in agreement about 
how much, how often, when can they call you? What's the time frames? And so it won't be like you just deciding at two o'clock in the morning that you need to get that thing down and going to get it. You can't call somebody on Sunday night at nine and expect them to come over and be helpful. So um, it does change. Um, at asking for outside support changes the time frames in which you can get things done as well. Another area in the another thing about the house is are there really tight spaces that become difficult to navigate as you lose mobility or add assistive devices. So do you have a really narrow hallway between the front of the house and, and the bedroom, for instance, or is there a really tight space that has a lot of furniture in it and you have to maneuver very carefully through narrow spaces to get through? Um, those are fine when you're mobile and uh, active and walking without help. But when that thing, when that shifts for you, then those tight spaces become more of a problem. So once you've made the choice to age in place, what can you do to create a supportive environment and set yourself up for success? Let's talk about some of the ways you need to adapt. The first thing I thought about was personal care, um, bathing, washing your hair, getting dressed. A crowded bathroom will make this really hard. You may have to add a shower chair into the shower. You may need a chair at the bathroom sink. You'll wanna be able to reach your supplies without a step stool or a ladder. And if you have so much stuff in the bathroom that you've got all the available space full, you need to start emptying those cabinets right now. <laughs> you think you want to keep all those options, but if you can't reach those options without physical danger, then it's still all, it, it'll all still be there when you pass away and some will be dragging it all out later. So you want to aim to get the most essential things in your personal care area reachable and reachable with reduced mobility which will mean reducing a bunch of the clutter volume and paring it down to the most important, most essential things that you use to bathe and get dressed in the morning. <clears throat> um, think about household chores like cleaning the house, doing the yard work, grocery shopping and laundry. The laundry room better be easy to get into and use um, adjusting the amount of the housework is directly affected by how much stuff you have. So, a cleaning service can clean around the piles, but then any unclean spaces affect your air quality and the cleanliness affects your health. I have a story to tell. Um, a woman called me and said that her ex-husband was unwell and he was in the hospital. And when he was coming home, she went to go take food over there. And when she opened the door, she was blasted in the face with the odor of um, what, es what essentially was dog and human urine in the house. And so she sort of held her breath and ran in and put the food in and ran out. But her husband, ex-husband was coming home from the hospital to live in that environment, which was clearly not clean and not going to support his recovery from his illness. If you lose control of the ability to clean the house, then you're directly affecting your ability to be healthy and well in the house. And so getting things out of the way, letting there be less and less to manage, letting there be less furniture and stuff in the way will help you keep up with the housework, keep the housework at a level that you can manage or make it easier for someone to pay someone to come and clean. And it will help you stay healthy in space. I think that's the biggest story, some version of that story. It's an extreme one, but some version of that story, I hear that a lot as people age in place and lose the ability to manage their own surroundings. And the first thing that happens is it starts to be physically unsafe for them to live in it because of the cleanliness of the house. <clears throat> Most people can't imagine losing that capacity, but by the time you've lost it, it's too late to fix it. You've got to do something now while you have the capacity and make it easy to clean or make it easy for others to clean so you can stay in your house and be well. Um, think about meals, cooking them, eating well, eating good food, um, and eating is socializing, having people over. The kitchens get harder and harder to use as you age. You're messing with heat or fire in order to cook. And food waste becomes a biohazard if you can't manage to keep it clean. 
the less you have in the kitchen to work around and the easier it is to clean up and put things away, the more you can manage your own kitchen and your own meals. Years ago, I did a project for Galveston Housing Authority and I went to um, offer my services to people that were living in a housing facility. It was a high rise in, on Galveston Island. And I went into this woman's little apartment and she clearly still liked to cook a lot. Um, and she liked cooking with oil. And the stove was covered in oil residue. There was oil, you know how oil mists and it sort of goes up the wall and it gets on the vent hood. And there was oil residue on the floor in front of the stove. And she was unable to clean that up. It was not, she didn't have the capacity to get on the floor and clean the floor. She, and so she kept cooking every day and she was just making it more and more of a hazard for her to be walking on and for her to be cooking in front of. And, you know, I shudder to think if she set the apartment on fire at some point because the residue was so heavy there. And, and so these are the kinds of things that start to slip as you age in place and somebody needed to be coming in and cleaning for them. And these people were all low income and they didn't have that kind of cleaning service. And so um, she needed the help and didn't, and couldn't do it herself. And, still like to cook. And the result was there was oil all over the front and the stove and the surrounding areas. And I hope she didn't go up in flames. I hope the house did not catch on fire. <laughs> That's the best. I don't know what happened. And I'm, I just hold in my heart that it's all well. Um, think about managing your money, paying bills on time, dealing with insurance, whether that's home insurance or your car insurance or um, your health insurance. This is a problem when your mental capacity starts to slip and aging in place really requires that you manage your finances yourself. Having a system to manage the bills becomes really important so that things get paid on time and you can keep track of your paperwork and you know where your household paperwork is because that's really key to being able to continue to manage it yourself. If you start to slip, then bills don't get paid on time, utilities get turned off, things happen because you can't quite manage to keep up with it all. And recognizing that you're having trouble in this area and finding someone reliable to take that on, whether it's a family member or uh, someone that you pay to manage it uh, is super important to figure out now. And to make your filing system easy to learn and maintain over time. You don't want something that's super difficult, offices that are super crowded, make it hard to be putting things away and just like putting away the towels in the in the closet it's hard to put paper away when everything's super crowded in the filing system or in the office and so managing the clutter in that area will help you continue to manage your finances and keep up with your paperwork and know where it is and all about minimizing down to exactly what you have to have and nothing more the other way that clutter impacts your ability to age in place is around you being at home and being able to move around inside the home. If you start walking with a support like a walker or a cane, then the pathways become really, really important to be clear and easily navigatable. As a young, healthy person, you can move around in a cluttered space because you can step around stuff. You can, um, shuffle along over uneven surfaces you can climb over things and it's all easily to easily manage if you're willing to fight through things that are in your way but those pathways not being clear prevent you from successfully using a walker or a cane god forbid you break something and you have to walk around the house on crutches then you're just like you know you're standing on the end of a of a pin basically and swinging yourself in space and hoping you don't fall down and break something else a lot of people call me at that point they come home with a walker or they come home with crutches after they fell or they start having arthritis and the doctor gives them a cane and then they realize that they can't put the cane down without the rug slipping out from under them or they can't fit the walker in the space because they've been walking in really narrow pathways all this time and now the walker is a problem and so clearing pathways with uh, the future in mind of needing assistance, either 
with a device or a person helping you navigate through the through the house, it'd be important to plan for that and try to make those spaces clear up. And to create the good habits now that you're going to need to, to survive in that future circumstance, right. you know, I, I, with this, I'm, I'm suffering from a little plantar fasciitis, which is a short term thing, I hope, but right. it means that I have to pay careful attention to stretching before I get out of bed and then you know, not, I can't just jump out of bed. I have to pay attention to putting my feet squarely on the floor and sort of testing the, how do I, how does it feel today? Is there any, is there going to be any twinge? You know, am I going to have to support myself on the good foot while the, while the bad <laughs> the foot, good foot. <laughs> the good, the good foot, while the bad foot, you know, catches up and yeah. it's sort of a preview of, what it what I presume it will be like you know to get older you know someday there I may have you know a longer term disability like this and um so you know you have to be careful about not leaving you just can't just toss the (laughs) the discarded clothes anywhere not if you want a you know neat clean surface on which to put your feet in the morning right and survive yeah well, and, and God forbid, if you have dogs in the house, right? Like if you also live with dogs who are your loving companions and you adore them and, you know, or cats and you go to walk with a walker and a dog running around in between and a cat running around in between, like there needs to be enough room for everybody to pass. <laughs> and if your if your pathway is really narrow and you're trying to move your walker and your big, you know, 70 pound dog goes running in front of you and, you know, it, train wreck waiting to happen right so you want to accommodate i i still want to live with pets pets make me happy right so you need to make that work for all of you guys to navigate plus your supportive devices i think that's the biggest i think that's the most important one in terms of staying in the in the house and having it be easy is that there's not clutter that makes the pathways difficult or impossible to pass with the gear that you start having to use to get around There's all kinds of ways that the clutter impacts your ability to function. And if you're struggling to function now while you still have good capacity, then you know it's just going to get more and more difficult. And we've had this conversation before, declutter now while you have the capacity. I'm currently dealing with a client who is really struggling with short-term memory loss and confusion and one of the things that's happening is that instead of her piles of paper being meaningful they are now chaotic there she doesn't have the logic capacity to make the categories of piles anymore and the result is there's paper everywhere and they're in completely you know like somebody might as well have thrown them all up over their head and let them fall where they landed And she can't remember, I mean, she can remember that she wants a particular piece of paper, but she has no clue where it is. And she has no clue, you know, she picked it up 15 minutes ago and put it down somewhere and she can't remember. And so she's really starting to struggle. And I actually had to call somebody this week and say, uh, she needs more support than I am authorized or prepared to provide. And I don't have all of the skill set that I need to be helpful to her. And I think she isn't, it's now a safety issue. Like she's not safe in the house because of all of the things that she's losing control of. And it's very evident to me in the state of the paper. It has shifted from some random collected piles that the maid stacked up or that the person stacked up. This is where they drop the mail every day, or this is where they put all the papers that they're going to file and they make a pile, but there's still some some amount of logic to the piles. And then you cross this line where your brain cannot keep any of those categories present. And 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 it, it's just like the tornado has been unleashed in the paper and it just, just crazy. And we've lived through some moments of panic 
where I file something or put something away in order to keep up with the debit cards to the investment account, for instance. And then she panics because she doesn't remember that that's what I did with them. And she thinks that they're lost and, and gets very distressed and upset about it. These are the kinds of things that start to happen as you lose some mental capacity. And so making sure that you have trusted solutions in place before that happens is really important. And, uh, you know, I'm not in charge of solving the problem for this woman because I have no legal capacity, but <laughs> that, you know, I, I have passed on some information to someone else and I'm hoping that someone will, there, that will start the process of getting her some more support that she needs. And in the meantime, her paper is total chaos and I have to go dig it out to find what's important and make sure bills are getting paid and things. And so I'm, I'm working on that part of the process. <clears throat> Do you have some advice for, you know, how those of us who are still reasonably capably managing it ourselves can prepare for ourselves with reduced capacity or for someone else to take it over? Like what, what do you generally recommend? So a, if you've been saving a huge amount of paper, you know, a thin it down, thin down the paper, get rid. This is when you start doing all the shredding and the throwing and the recycling and all of that paper that you've been ignoring. We need to deal with it right now because it will only make the tornado a thousand times worse later because you will start digging through all that stuff in your reduced capacity, looking for something because you don't know where something is. So a, get as much paper out as you can. And then B, investigate bookkeeping services, account accountants that provide that kind of financial support where they're in charge of making bills paid, be paid. Um, nowadays, there's all kinds of things you can get on auto pay, which is awesome. You should immediately get all the utilities on auto pay so that regardless of whether you remember or not, the electric bill, the gas bill, the water bill, they all get paid. <laughs> That's super important. And so um, getting as much as you can on auto pay, I think is really good. And then whether you trust a family member to handle this or you hire somebody third party because that makes you feel more safe, I think getting somebody taking over those jobs while you still feel good about it, while you still feel capable of it is important. Because if you wait to handle it after you don't feel comfortable, after you can't keep control of it anymore, you won't trust or feel safe with your solution. It'll, it'll be harder for you to trust. It'll add to your sense of insecurity. Yeah, and anxiety. Like she gets really anxious about stuff and because no one is helping her manage her bills and, and manage her can she buy groceries? Can she pay the rent? Can she pay for the cell phone? And those things are, I mean, I'm doing my best to step in, but I'm not her legal representative about that. So I'm trying to help and there needs to be more permanent uh, legal protection around that. Rowan so, suggests getting invoices emailed to your bookkeeper is a good option. Yes, yes, if you yes. Use, if you use an independent bookkeeper. And, and truthfully, having, um, having a third party manage it is there is some risk there, but it's no different than anybody else. Like you're surrendering control of some things. And so they can either write checks and bring them to you to sign, or you can give them authorization to pay certain stuff without um, your intervention and having a third party. Like if you want to give that bookkeeping service to a, a company, then having a child, a friend, a relative, who is in contact with them and checking up on what they're doing would be helpful. If you trust a, a child, um, a sibling, whatever to take over for you, uh, that's awesome. And, and set up the parameters around that so that you feel comfortable, but do something sooner rather than later. What you are able to memorize when your mind is still flexible and comfortable learning new things um, it now is the time to learn the, the filing system so that it becomes part of your, uh, your muscle memory that you know that you need to take this thing and put it in that particular place. That will help you when, it, as you slip a little, right? That muscle memory of, I know where stuff is in this house because I've been doing this for 10 years or 20 years in this exact way. Uh, that will support you in staying maneuverable in the house.
A lot of times people make that move to independent living really, really late in the game. And then it really changes their cognition and capacities because uh, the movement to a new place disrupts all their systems. Everything's in a new place. Everything is different. And it's a whole lot of learning all at once late, late in the game. So if you decide that aging in place isn't for you and you would rather go someplace where you have a more assistance, you're going to go to independent living and eat at the cafeteria. You're going to be in assisted living and have people coming in and checking on you during the day. Um, if you want to join that support, do it sooner rather than later so that you have time to move and learn the new layout and the new place. If you go to live with family or they provide someplace where you make that change now while you have the time to learn where everything is again. So that's not as disruptive. It's not as hard to adjust. I think that's, <laughs> I, I think that's as much as I can say about that, except clutter gets in your way and it requires physical capacity and mental capacity to manage it. And so Anything that you can do to reduce the volume in the house and make the pathways easier and make the basic functions of taking care of yourself, bathing and dressing, making food and eating, um, getting in and out of the bed, getting in and out of the house easier will help you stay there and help you be comfortable while you stay there. And that's what we wish for you. Who has okay. questions today about that topic? Uh, several people have mentioned in the chat you know, that auto pay is a, a beautiful thing. Rejo right. Joyce, Joyce said that. And um, Samudra added, I, having ADHD, I've used auto pay whenever possible for as long as it's been available. And my credit cards are auto paid out of my checking account. Hey, that is a good thing. And then even if you're, Rowan mentioned that, you know, even if you're, uh, even if you can't do auto pay through the through the things you're paying the your bank will usually let you set up bill pay options where you can pay them yeah, automatically you push it from the bank you to the, push instead to the of vendor. pulling yeah. yeah 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 exactly and eclair said surrendering here seems to be the key and i think we are all a little resistant to surrendering oh no kidding yeah and we all resist the idea that we need help and it's inconvenient to have help. Like the thing about help is you have to work it around their schedule, not just yours. And you have to make an effort to interact and be supportive. And if it's a third party, then you need to compensate them for the help. And sometimes people get annoyed. It's like, I should be able to do this. I don't know why I'm having to pay for this. Well, cause this is what you saved all your money for. <laughs> this is the, this is the time that you use the money that you've been saving to support your functionality in the, in your old age, right? It supports you in doing what you need to do. And it's, I have this discussion with clients all the time. It's like, I should be able to do this. Well, that's what you saved the money for. Like, that's what you worked all those years for and made all that savings so that you could take care of yourself and, and be kind to yourself when it got hard and you couldn't be in charge of yourself anymore. <laughs> That's the whole point of saving all the money, right? And so use the money to support yourself and make it be easier. And in looping in people that you trust um, to do things for you is important. A house, cle house cleaner is, I think, a big thing. If you are having, if you struggle with cleaning the house, then you need people coming to clean the house. And that would be the first thing I'd add on right away because. I go in a lot of houses where the quality, the air quality and the cleanliness of the house becomes a physical health hazard for the occupants of the house. And I end up hauling away things that are, you know, clearly have been sitting there so long and they're mildewed or they're covered in um, inches of dust. And all that stuff is in the air quality and being circulated in the, with the air conditioner in the house. And it affects people's ability to be healthy, breathe well, recover. You can't expect yourself to recover from an illness or manage with a, a chronic condition if the, the environment in which you're living is not clean and not safe to be in. And so creating space managing the space to support you later is a really important 
mental exercise to go through. What do I need to do to make it easier now? If I'm having a hard time now, what's it going to be like 10 years from now? Well, and that is a really good place to segue to our tittle because our yes. tittle, our tittle this week is really, it is, uh, it is, a thought experiment. It's not. It's not as much of a hands-on assignment as as usual. Right. Would you so, like to go ahead with that? I will. So the the title is called the Crystal Ball Not Required. So for this week's assignment, we'd like you to, you to evaluate your present living situation with a view toward how well it will support your future self. Um, independence. Will your housing circumstances permit you to continue to drive? shop and otherwise maintain your independence as you grow older safety can you move in and out of and around your home with ease and would you be able to continue to do so if your health and your mobility were to decline security how easy is it for you to get from your car to the house or the apartment is your space secure against intruders would you feel safe as an elderly person in your current neighborhood do you have an alarm system? <laughs> Comfort. Can you store, find, and retrieve everything you need to go about your daily routines in ease and comfort? Ask yourself those questions as you walk around the house and see where you find impediments to aging in place and having that be easy and comfortable and safe. And see where there's, where there's some hot spots that you need to start addressing. And come back and tell us about it. Okay, I want to share share a few more comments before we get to our final announcements. Actually, before that, I'm go, I will say I want to remind those who are viewing or listening live that we have a YouTube channel, uh, in case you haven't seen it, with more than 170 video, videos on a wide variety of organizing topics. Visit cfhou.com slash YouTube. YouTube. While you're there, subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon next to the subscribe button if you'd like to get notifications when we post new content. I wanted to share that Leslie, who's with us on Facebook, said, my mother used an accountant and the accountant was her, ex her executor when she died. That's one and, way to do that. Yeah. And often, um, you know, if you are dealing with a lawyer that, with a will, then sometimes they have associated accountants and bookkeeping services, or they, you know, they refer back and forth to each other. And so um, when you start, if you have money to manage and you start dealing with somebody around that and start writing a will and stuff, then you can ask them for services that they trust, that they have other clients using, and then you can feel a little bit more comfortable about the service that's being provided. Um, make sure you do your due, due diligence and make sure that someone, you know, you can review and get customer reviews and also testimonials about how, how they do um, before you just turn over everything. Make sure it's a good person and they're safe and they're going to provide their fiduciary responsibility to you without incident. <laughs> Diane said, it is so hard to clean around clutter. We live in a very dusty area. Even though we have an air purifier going 24 mm seven, -hmm. there's still lots of dust every week on surfaces. I am so glad that I've been steadily working on decluttering for several years now. Right, because there's just that much less to accumulate dust and it's easier for you to go through and clear out the dust that's new or have someone else come and clear it out. You know, one thing I didn't talk about was one of the options for aging in place might be that you get a live-in support there. Maybe a family member moves in with you, or maybe you hire someone to be in there during the day or to sleep at the home overnight. And uh, a lot of times people do that as a permanent solution to stay in place. And so you have to have space for them to live. <laughs> you have to have a bedroom that they can get into and it can't be super crowded or difficult because it's going to become their home as well. And so uh, plan, if, if your solution is that someone you know and trust or someone that you hire is going to come and live with you, then you have to prepare for that person to have a bathroom that is clean and clear and have a bedroom that is clean and clear. And whether you're going to share another room with them or 
you know, give them space to put food in the fridge or in the pantry or whatever, however you work out that situation, you need to prepare for that new roommate that's going to come in. And so think about what you would have to do to allow someone to come and live there with you. Yeah, you might have to trade a little of your privacy and solitude for keeping the rest of your independence. Exactly. That's one way to think about that. Yeah. S Susan said, I made the unusual step of upsizing rather than downsizing in order to have space for a live-in carer, should I ever need one. I rent the extra space out at the moment to supplement my pension. Great idea. That's And that's some great future planning, right? Like there's now you have, you know, you have space and somebody can come and live in it and be there with you when you need help. That's awesome. And she added, I did this after an unfortunate experience with assisted living for my elderly father. The care services here in the UK are expensive and not brilliant. Yeah, I think, you know, there's a lot of us aging at this point and probably not as many services as we need. And we just keep crossing our fingers that the bigger the population, the more, um, you know, services get developed to support us. <laughs> That's what I'm holding out for anyway. Crossing our fingers on some Crossing of that. Crossing our fingers, right? <laughs> Marilyn said, good point about moving sooner rather than later. We moved three years ago to a different state. In our 70s, we need Google Maps everywhere we go. We only know our new immediate area. Right. But in our old home state, we had a lifetime of navigating different locations within the state. Thank you, Google Maps. Right. Thank God for Google Maps, because then you're not lost. Right. Then you're I not lost at all. I feel the same way. You know, in Houston, I had I had been there long enough that someone could say, oh, yeah, it's a, it's you know, it's across from where the such and such used to be. Or it's you know, it's it's on such and such a in street, that part of town, three blocks south, you know, and I could get there. And now I'm now I'm in Chattanooga and they say, Oh, you know, it's next to so-and-so. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know I that. No idea what you're talking about. <laughs> right? Well, and I think this happens a lot because people move to live near their children and grandchildren, right? So that's something that you do later in life. And, you know, after you retire, after you start to feel like, you know, you're going to need family support. And if you live far away from them, then that becomes... The next solution is that you move across the country. Like my mother did the same thing. My mother and dad and Sue, they moved from Texas to North Carolina. And so that was, you know, half across the country and everything was new. And they did it when they were in, uh, I guess my mom did it at like 63 and my dad did it at 66. And, you know, now They've lived there for 20 years and they feel perfectly comfortable and they know where things are and they know how to get around and they've adapted to their environment, but it gave them, you know, they had, they've had 20 years to get used to it and learn the new place. And so if you think your ultimate solution is going to be that earlier rather than later is a good thing. Yeah. Moving does not get any easier. No, it oh does gosh. not. No, it does not. And the more you have to haul, the harder it is. So now's the time to start thinning out what you're hauling off. I have an interesting comment that I re really want to get your feedback on. This is from Teresa, who's with us on Facebook. She said, my husband, my mother, who lives with me, mother-in-law who helps sit with my mom, actually complain about how organized and picky I am about putting things away. It's so upsetting. I feel like just shoving things in the cabinets all willy-nilly and seeing what they think about that. <laughs> can you oh don't listen to them you're it's yeah. probably just that the person feels embarrassed like you're reflecting to them that their level of organizing is um more cluttered than your level of organizing and that's okay if they're just they feel a little embarrassed or uncomfortable by reflection then you know don't let that stop you from doing it because you know it's going to make a difference and you know it's going to help people in the end and so just, you know, uh-huh, and keep doing it. <laughs> Good advice. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, yeah, yeah, I like things organized and move on, right? Okay, I want, we are running out of time fast. I want to remind everyone that we'll be back next week at the usual time, Tuesday, September 7th at noon U.S. Central Time, live in Zoom and streaming on Facebook. Ancient wisdom tells us that the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. 
but negative emotions and attitudes can make it hard to find that first step in our organizing process. In next week's episode, we'll share some simple techniques to short circuit your negative thinking, get unstuck, and start reclaiming your space and your life. Let's talk about getting unstuck, you guys. It'll be awesome. If you're watching this on YouTube, we would love for you to join us live. To get notifications about upcoming events, we invite you to join the meetup group by visiting cfhou.com slash meetup. You can also follow us on Facebook by going to cfhou.com slash Facebook or join our mailing list by visiting cfhou.com slash subscribe. We love to hear from you, so please keep those questions, comments, and topic suggestions coming in YouTube comments, on Facebook, or wherever you find us. You can always reach us through our website at clutterfairhouston.com. Great to see you guys this week. I'm so glad that um, everybody uh, hopefully is safe from Hurricane Ida right now. And we are thinking about you if you're not. And uh, we can hope that, you know, your electricity comes on. You can join us again next week. And uh, everybody else, we'll see you next time. Thanks for coming. Bye. Bye.